Hello and welcome to your pre-practical lecture for experiment four. Um, in, this pre, in this experiment, we will be looking at the determination of a freezing point diagram for a binary alloy system, specifically that of lead and tin. And we have a little bit of a backstory for you for once on why exactly we will be doing this. So we will get into that right now. So experiment four's purpose is that there is an electronics company called Yomama Electronics in, based in Durban, and they manufacture ventilators. And essentially they have some problem with the electronic boards that are constantly failing. And their engineers have isolated the problem to be their solder material. And essentially what the problem is with their solder material is that this material does, has too high a melting temperature. And the temperature of their melting of the or the melting temperature of this material is above 200 degrees Celsius. So the current alloy composition they're using is above 200 degrees Celsius. They have now contacted us because that's what engineers do when, whenever they get stuck. They contact scientists. Is they contact the scientists to sort out their problem, and now they want something that will melt below 200 degrees Celsius because that will allow them to solder at a temperature low enough to not destroy the, the components of their circuit board. In other words, fix their problem so they can build their ventilators, make their money, and um, save people's lives. Right. So just as a summary, so we have some sort of electronics company that builds electronic boards for ventilators. And they use a specific mixture of lead and tin, which they now want to have a solder, or well, in other words, a binary alloy, which is called a solder, to solder with, which freezes below 200 degrees Celsius. We need to determine which ratio of lead and tin, so for example, let's say 20% tin and 80% lead, is going to give us a mixture or an alloy which will freeze at below 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's your very short introduction to um, experiment force purpose or the aim, the background of what we want to do. So how are we going to put our theoretical knowledge um, to work and how to, or how to solve this problem? Well, essentially we know that from the properties of matter that in a system where we have a component A and B, that if we mix components A and B, um, there, let's start with the, the melting point of components A and B. So in other words, the red circle here. Then any mixture of A and B, or combination of them, will then have a lower melting point. In other words, somewhere in the freezing point diagram here, we'll have a lower melting point, and we'll have some sort of minimum. This minimum is also called the eutectic point. Um, and this minimum melting point is what we there are then, in, or freezing point is with which we are then uh, interested in. Of course, remember melting and freezing are just opposite processes. So if I use the two interchangeably, please um, do not get confused. It just means I'm talking about whichever condition. If they solder, then they're melting the thing. If it freezes, then the solder is unsoldering. Um, essentially, and we will say, so in other words, we want to determine a this freezing point or diagram for a freezing diagram or freezing point diagram for a lead tin lead lead tin system. Um, in other words, we want to find this eutectic temperature so that we can give them the exact composition. Right. So, what is this composition? So that's our question essentially. And to answer this, we need to first determine the composition or phase diagram of our latent alloy. So how are we going to do this? And the answer lies in collecting cooling curves of different mixtures. But we need to get, so in other words, to get this eutectic point. So cooling curves, so I've mentioned our cooling curves. We will map our phase diagram by changing both the composition of the alloy and then measuring the temperature of A and B um, on their own. So in other words, tin and lead on their own, and then some mixtures in between of them, specific mixtures to get our specific graph. 
then essentially from them. By collecting data points, we can then connect them and draw a phase diagram from them. <clears throat> we should do this by using cooling experiments, which we'll get into later, and we'll determine different freezing points for the mixtures from those cooling experiments. And then eventually from this, we will determine the aesthetic temperature and the aesthetic composition um, from these graphs. So if you look at the graph, we will do something like this. We will make a bunch of mixtures and we will then determine the temperature at which these mixtures freeze and we will plot them there. We will also determine their euthetic temperature. So we will have a temperature during which it will start to, the rate of the cooling curve is going to start to decrease. So initially, when you're cooling a mixture of A and B, you're going to have a quick cooling. Then you're going to have a slight decrease in cooling. Then you have to have a plateau, which is the point where it freezes. And then you again have a cooling period where the solid then cools down to whichever temperature is your end temperature, where it equilibrates. But that initial point where the rate starts to decrease is a point here on our graph. And this point here where, it's where it plateaus, where we have um, only the solid, where we have all, all our mixture in the solid phase is called the euthetic freezing points. So in other words, all the points on this line. So essentially that what I meant was we will have mixtures, we will have a freezing point starting point, where, so in other words, a point where the rate decreases. This will make a lot more sense later on. I promise I'll go over this 14 million times. You'll probably get it by the end of this. And then we'll also have a constant temperature at which all of these cooling curves are going to remain constant. So this is essentially going to have two points on each of these cooling curves the whole time, which you're then going to translate to a plot here. And you're going to connect these dots, you know, just like the old fashioned connect the dots kind of play, um, which will then help you to determine your freezing point diagram or your phase diagram for your liquid uh, solid system. Okay. But of course, in reality, this is only a hypothesis. This is a hypothesis what we are testing. So we say that this is what we're going to do. Um, it's not necessarily this is how it's going to work out. I mean, we, we, might, we might be completely wrong. I mean, who am I? I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely nobody. So we're going to make mixtures and we will be measuring the temperatures and constructing a phase diagram. This will either support or disprove our hypothesis. In other words, our expectation of that there is actually a minimum and that there is actually some sort of freezing point diagram or phase diagram that looks something like this. It might look completely different. Who knows? Um, but we will do the experiment and we will see from there. This is, of course, so I've stated now, but we expect you will now test if that is actually reality or with the demonstration and with the data provided you will test if that is then reality. Um, of course, these experiments, they do work out as we do, as we state them for ease of interpretation. Um, but just in principle, always keep in bear in mind that it's not necessarily that it will work out as the theory suggests. It is always in, in principle, you will have an expectation and then you're going to test with experiment and you should then, then draw your conclusions from there. Um, but yes, so this slide was just a more a philosophical note on what is what is happening here. But anyway, okay, so let's get into what you're going to do in or what is the method for experiment four is. So for experiment four, you were making several mixtures of lead and tin, and then you will add them to a steel test tube and you will measure their cooling rates or their cooling graphs. So in other words, measure the temperature of their cooling over time. So start with the mixtures as stipulated in table 4.1. We'll mix them together in some sort of steel tube. You'll have a thermocouple. A thermocouple is just a fancy thermometer, but essentially a thing, a thermometer that can be connected to a data logger, which will then record um, temperature every few seconds or when every specific time interval you set it to record and it will give you a cooling curve um, as you will see 
in the, next, the following slides. So my first question is, why don't we just, for example, do this on, so let, what will happen if we do this on a hot plate? Let's say, for example, we take our system now with the thermocouple, our steel tube, we do this in a hot plate. Um, if you've read the manual, you'll see this mention of a sandbox that will do this in a sandbox. But let's say, for example, we start just with a hot plate. So we heat up our system and we see there's some rise in temperature and we let everything melt. And then what's going to happen the moment we take away the, the heat? Well, we're going to have a very rapid decrease in temperature, which is going to make it very difficult to see any changes in the rates to see where it remains constant, where anything changes, etc. So what we will do to um, change this process, that is why we introduce some the sandbox idea. Sandbox is sort of a um, trying to keep the heat, the, the heat there for longer to allow the system to cool down slowly and in, in, uh, to reach equilibrium each step to it. Um, I don't want to use the word reversibly, but essentially reversibly. Okay. To slow down the cooling process, we will place our steel tube in a sandbox, which looks something like this. There's drawings here. And I will represent it from now on like this. So as you can see, your steel tube is in the sandbox, and we have our thermocouple. Okay. And this will allow us to determine the cooling rate a bit slower and then get the data from. Uh, your Excel spreadsheet, which or the data that's collected here, you'll see in an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Now, a few questions. How do we expect these curves then to look if we put this in the sandbox and is able actually to look at it? So from first year, you should know that anything that undergoes a phase transition is something associated with your temperature. What happens during a phase transition? Does the temperature change? Does it remain constant? Does it go up and down? What happens? Um, so that's essentially what, what are we expecting these cooling curves to look like? We are just expected to go linearly from whichever temperature we've heated our system down to room temperature. Do you expect it to go down slightly, remain constant, and then again? What, what do you expect? Um, and we will now look at three cases to explain what, what we should expect to, the data to do. In the first case, we'll look at tin only. So for example, tin's melting point is approximately 230 degrees Celsius. So we should see a linear decrease. And then at some stage, there's going to be a point where it remains constant. In other words, this is where the tin freezes. So as you have in a normal phase diagram, you have your liquid tin, it freezes, where it freezes, the temperature remains constant, and from there on the solid cools down again. So you have your liquid, which cools down, where it starts to solidify, you have a constant temperature, so you have a phase transition from liquid to solid, and then you have a linear decrease again, back or down to whichever the equilibration temperature is, which would be room temperature in our case, and that's at approximately 230 degrees Celsius. In a similar fashion for the lead, you should expect the same form of graph, except now it's only should, it should be higher because lead's freezing point is 340 degrees Celsius. So where tin had a freezing point over there, lead should reach it over there. And again, your liquid cools down, reaches the freezing point, remains constant for a while, and freeze down. But how does this cooling curve change when we have a mixture? Now, the simple answer is it's not just going to look like when we have a pure substance, because we don't have pure substances in phase, which will undergo a phase change, everything at the same stage. We should expect at some stage that there is a change in the rate of cooling. Um, and the reason for this, if you're really interested, you need to read your textbook on that. Um, and essentially, you can argue this in a logical fashion, that you have a mixture of two substances. So the one is going to influence how quickly the other starts to cool down. 
So you should see a graph looking something like this. An initial rate, then a decrease in the rate of cooling, which gives a kink in the graph. Then when we have a point where we have no return, in other words, where everything has to solidify, you will have a plateau. This is our eutectic temperature. And of course, then once everything is solidified, the solid again will just decrease down to room temperature, whichever that is from the eutectic temperature. So we have two, temp two distinct temperatures for the mixtures. The two distinct temperatures is the first temperature is the temperature at which the rate slows down. And the other temperature is then the, the temperature at which it finally solidifies. So temperature at which the rate slows down and the temperature at which it finally solidifies. That's the two temperatures we're interested in for the mixtures actually A through H or mixtures B through H, um, which you will look at. For all your mixtures, you're interested in these two points because that is what you're going to plot to get your phase diagram for your freezing or your freezing point diagram, whichever one you want to call it. Okay. So your data, you will download this thermocouple data from ClickUp as thermochemistry data Excel spreadsheet. You open the spreadsheet in Excel and it should be organized for each run. So in other words, as per the mixtures, and you're going to plot your temperature versus time for your freezing and get your freezing points from this. And please do not tabulate this in your report. You do not have to have your data in the report. I know you got it from the Excel spreadsheet. I'm quite sure you did not make it up. Um, so please, just the graphs. And you can all plot them on the same graph. Um, it actually look quite nice if you plot them on the same graph, different colors. We know how to do that. We went through Excel quite extensively. So you should be very skilled now. <clears throat> and of course, then from these freezing temperature data and your points where the, where the rate starts to decrease, you're going to draw your phase diagram for your binary alloy system. Specifically, what I meant was for each of the compositions, so you now know what composition is, so the pure lead, pure tin, pure, pure lead, and uh, well, the pure lead and pure tin, for example, and each of the compositions in between, you're going to have a point where the kink was, the temperature where the kink was, for example, and then a eutectic temperature. So in other words, a point where the mixture started to remain constant, that's your eutectic temperature. And that should give you a graph that looks something like this. So if you plot the eutectic temperatures, they all remain constant, and then your, your freezing point diagram should look something like this. And the point where these two intersect is going to give you your euthetic composition and, of course, temperature. So about 0.47, for example, for this case, I just made this up. Just so don't quote me on that. This is just here for illustrative purposes. Okay. To draw this graph, um, just to help you out a bit, you will tabulate your data in Excel like this. So this is your mole fraction. This is your um, your temperatures, your freezing point temperatures, or the point where the rate starts to slow down, and this is your euthetic temperatures. You're going to select that chart type after you selected those data points, and that's going to plot, plot something like that. And of course, then you're going to make the graph pretty, because you're going to change, you're going to take away the chart title, charts don't have titles, you're going to have your legend somewhere else, you're going to have your chart, you're going to have your axis titles, um, etc. You're going to make everything nice and readable, and you're going to have the right things on the right axes, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, this is our final product, so to speak. So, what you're going to give to these to our clients, in principle. Um, so, also indicate clearly, nicely the points. So, give it a point there and indicate what that point is: the eutectic temperature and composition. And also indicate the specific um, regions. So in other words, what's here? Is this gas, for example? Or is it solid? Or is this, is this liquid tin and liquid lead? And is this liquid solid? Is this liquid tin and li solid lead? Is this both liquids? Or is it both solids? What is this region? So name all of your regions. You can call it A, B, C, D, and then have a legend that says A, B, C, D is. Da, 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 da. Uh, of course, and then you will have a full report 
explaining everything. There's a post-practical video for you on the full report. Um, something you might want to consider using, just for interest sake, is uh, on mass percentage. So we usually use mole fraction because we're chemists, um, but engineers use something called mass percentage. So in other words, percentage mass and mole fraction, it's actually exactly the same thing, but engineers sometimes get confused by superfluous things. So give them, uh, perhaps you want to consider giving them it in mole fraction as well as the mass percentage. So in other words, 7% tin, 12% lead. Although that would never exist in this year, but you know, 53% lead, 43% tin, or whatever. Um, it must make 100, so you know, 50 50, or whatever. You know, it, that is just something you might want to look into. Uh, finally, some administrative points uh, we need to cover is you need to attend your specific live demonstration session as per the detailed practical roster. So please just check that in your practical guide. Uh, remember, there's no practical pre-practical test, so please don't worry about that. Also, make the most of your time. Please look at the setup, take photos, ask questions, um, ensure that you understand everything here, <clears throat> because that is why we have the demonstration for you, so that you have opportunity to ask questions. And of course, remember the post-practical lecture, I will go through all the data analysis, etc., to ensure that everybody is on the same level so that you can write beautiful reports and full reports. Okay. So I uh, wish the best of luck, best, best of luck, and thank you for watching.